साईश्वराय विद्महे सत्यदेवाय धीमहे तन्न सर्व प्रचोदयाद शांति 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 साईराम डियर लिस्नर्स वी वुड फर्स्ट लाइक टू थैंक यू for your encouraging emails about this program just to give you an example one listener mrs jyoti ramchandran has written saying her heart was filled with joy when her 15 year old daughter found this program very interesting and the other day when she wanted to take a short break from her studies her daughter asked mom is there another study circle i can listen to and there was another listener mr morgan's abildgard from denmark He has said listening to the study circle brought tears of joy to my eyes. Please continue this service forever. Like this dear listeners we have received many positive feedbacks from all over the world but I think the most moving mail was from a senior alumnus Mr B Ramchandran very sadly he is currently suffering from a very rare condition called motor neuron disease which many will know is supposed to be incurable. and what he has written is very touching he says right now he has lost the faculty of speech the movement of his arms and is barely able to walk and obviously he is very depressed but when he heard the study circle he says that has changed his outlook in life and now he has completely surrendered to swami in fact after we received this email Sri Rangarajan sir who is the moderator of our study circles sent out emails to other alumni who are in Chennai and soon many of them gathered at his home and started doing bhajans mantra chantings and so on and all this has really helped lifting Ramchandran spirits so dear listeners we are happy that this program is helping you in some way and that is why we are back again to continue this series and as always along with myself and Sri Rangarajan sir there are the other three alumni Amay Desh Pandey, Sai Giridhar, and Ganesh. So, Rangarajan sir, let's begin. What is in store for us today? Thank you, Vishu. <clears throat> so, here we are again with another story from Bhagwan. Now, this time we have a story of a merchant who Swami says was a pseudo religious person and leveraged on God, no doubt, but for his own personal benefits. Now, he had four children, and he also had a grocery shop. Uh, no he was very smart you know he said see it is always desirable that at the last moment of your life you need to chant the name of the lord so what he said is the best way to do that is why don't i name all my four children based on the names of these gods so that invariably i'll be calling my son uh, hopefully when i die and therefore it would be uh, equivalent to calling the name of the god now here was smart a very move. smart <laughs> guy that you know the way we have these days right. uh, so he named his children as uh, rama krishna govinda and vasudeva Now cutting the story short there came the last moment of his life and he said oh rama and the one son came running he said oh krishna oh vasudeva and then finally he says oh govinda but this is where destiny you know you can never escape he almost he said oh govinda and the son comes but he didn't die and then came the thought Oh what about my grocery shop all my four sons are here and the moment he thought of his grocery <laughs> shop you know he passes away so swami says this way you really cannot outsmart god so our whole story today is based on the power of chanting the name of the lord basically there are three themes emerging from this one is the power of chanting the name of the lord the second one as we can see is uh, you need to start early you cannot simply get the name of the lord on your lips at the last moment and the third one is please don't try to outsmart god he is yes. the creator <laughs> absolutely In fact uh, I think the first point that really comes to mind is why at all do we take the name of the lord why is it necessary to take the name of the lord and to my uh, in my little understanding I feel that what bhagwan means in this story uh, taking the name of the lord is really being absolutely positive at every moment of your life the lord's name actually stands for everything which symbolizes truth beauty and goodness yeah basically all when you think of anything that is connected any epithet which is connected to the lord's name it only suffuses you with positive thoughts with joy with a feeling of optimism and hope 
So what really Bhagwan is trying to tell us is let us all the time think of something positive in life and preferably the name of the Lord. Why also? Because the name of the Lord itself has got a very, very potent vibration which is associated with it. That's right. There is another beautiful perspective about why we should constantly think of God or take his name uh, given by Sri Sureshwar Acharya. He was a disciple of uh, Sri Adi Shankara, better known as Mandan Mishra. He wrote a wonderful treatise called uh, Naishkarma Siddhi in which he explains that uh, for us to be aware of some things, mm -hmm. we need to have two things. That is one, the object of awareness and the second thoughts associated with the object of awareness. For example, we often ask if God is there everywhere, why are we not aware of him? True. The simple answer which Sri Sureshwara Charyaji gives is that when we walk on the road, we find a stone and we drip over it. Why? Why are we not aware of the stone? Absent-minded. Absent-mindedness. That is, thoughts associated with the stone is not there. The stone is there. Either we have seen it and have not thought about it because we are absent-minded or we have just not seen it. True. So now he says that when we walk on a road, we see the stone and immediately there is a thought which tells us, ha, huh, there is a stone there. What would we do? Walk around, isn't it? So we become aware of the stone. In the same way, he says, God, the object of awareness, is there everywhere. everywhere. All the time. All the time. <clears throat> For us to become aware of him, we need to have thoughts associated with God. That will dawn the awareness of God. Absolutely. That's where uh, comes the importance of consciously training our mind. Because an untrained mind can sweep the entire personality. Yeah. Here I'm reminded of a story of a master and his genie. This genie could perform Herculean tasks in a matter of no time. But the condition put by the genie was, if the master gives him even one second of freedom, he's going to kill the master. <laughs> so the master was continuously keeping the genie engaged one task after the other. But very soon, master started uh, running short of his bit. Out of jobs. Out of job. <laughs> so, so, master came out with a very beautiful idea. He sent a genie to a pole and told him, climb up and down, up and down. Right. Till he tells him to stop or he gives him some other tasks. So, that way, master saved his skin. Similarly, mind is like that genie which, which is continuously seeking some work. If we don't engage the mind in a right channel, then it is going to sweep our personality. That's why... The importance of Namasmarana comes and directing our attention, our focus towards an Easter Devata, a chosen form of worship. In fact, mm. Swami mm. says, consider Swami's form as the pole and keep yeah. your mind going from the head mm. to toe. Head to toe. Head to toe. Yeah, very so yeah, by very doing Namasmarana, we can engage the mind. In the and posture. actually, as Ganesh, as you're narrating about the genie, you know, I can't stop comparing that genie to my monkey mind because that's what happens all the time. <laughs> oh, that's our monkey mind. <laughs> our, 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 we share the same problem. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for sharing it. Uh, but what I'm trying to tell you is, thanks to my, you know, good upbringing, what I've tried to do is try to engage this genie, this monkey mind by always chanting some mantra. You know, if I'm walking on the road, if I'm doing anything, if I'm not doing really something very involving, what I'm doing is constantly chanting some mantra. Could be a Gayatri mantra, could be Sai Gayatri. And what I've noticed is, if suppose something untoward happens, like suppose I slip or I fall, what happens immediately is, Swami comes out from my mouth. It's not excuse me, it's not sorry. If suppose I sneeze, what comes is, oh sorry, no. What comes always is Swami. And uh, I always feel happy whenever this happens. Yeah, Vishu, I appreciate your saying that you feel happy, but many students even come and share this with me, that they do chant the name of the Lord, but somehow it doesn't give the sweetness. See, that's what the, they find it difficult to sustain it. Now we know the scriptures say the name of the Lord is very sweet, sweeter than the sugar cane juice. But why is it that this sweetness doesn't come? So I heard uh, Shri Murari Bapuji who hails from uh, Gujarat. He gives uh, many discourses on Ramayana. He was once saying that the name of Lord is absolutely suffused with great joy and nectarine sweetness. Yeah. But if we are demotivated in the sense we don't feel the sweetness when we take the Lord's name, it, we are not to blame the Lord's name for it. Mm -hmm. It is in fact our own disease that we have accumulated over births That's true. together yeah. Yeah. that is to be blamed for. The iron and doesn't uh, get attracted to the magnet because of the dust yeah, in the iron. Very true. It's not the mistake of the magnet, isn't yeah. it? Yes. So he says that 
if we keep taking the lord's name it acts as a medicine and the moment we are cured of the disease of samsara the very next name that we take will fill our hearts with joy and bliss great we have talked so much about this now let me ask you amai you are a bhajan singer and you sing bhajans every day in the proximity of the lord now you must have experienced the sweetness you are right sir in fact i should have done it a long uh, ago um but i my i must confess that in fact it's been only very very lately that i have really started enjoying uh, every word of of the bhajans and i have noticed one thing that is that when we actually concentrate on each and every word of the of the beautiful name of the lord in the bhajans i find myself unable to even complete the bhajan tears just come and well into my eyes and i'm not able to complete the bhajan and here i am tempted to narrate to you a very uh, powerful technique that you can we all can use when we actually sing bhajans as to how to get in tune with the bhava of the bhajan uh, so for example let us let us take any bhajan like uh, nandalala nandalala so uh, a particular gentleman had told us that try to develop a story along with along with the bhajan so i just tried this out and it goes something like this that uh, it's been a long time since bhagwan has spoken to us uh, he doesn't come into our dreams he doesn't you know uh, we don't get those beautiful moments that we have always wanted to get and so it's a very painful thing isn't it when we don't yeah, have, we can empathize with that yeah <laughs> <laughs> and so here you are sitting at the gate of the prashanti mandir and bhagwan comes out for darshan and for yet another time he is not speaking to you or he doesn't look to your side and even as he passes by you're not able to take it any more and you just burst out saying nandalala nandalala and so having heard your shout he turns back and he looks at you and uh, says ye mera what what do you want daya karo bhagwa Oh Lord, please have compassion on me. And the Lord is touched by your prayer, and so He starts walking towards you. But He says, "What do you want?" And then you say, "Bhava Sagar se parutaro." And Bhagwan, in his you know inimitable style, He take says, "Take me from this ocean of samsara. Take Liberate me across, me. yeah. Take me across this ocean, ocean of, of samsara. samsara." And Bhagwan, in his inimitable way, you know, He says, "What?" <laughs> as if he's hard of hearing <laughs> says emi daya karo bhagwan oh lord please have compassion don't leave me like this and now the the heart of the lord is melted okay and he is hugging you or he is caressing you and you hold on to his feet and you say tumhari sharan bin anath hai ab lord without the refuge at your feet we are orphaned we are nowhere we have no other refuge to go and bhagwan is so touched and he is speaking to you and he is smiling at you and you know the the bhajan culminates with daya karo bhagwan aise daya karo <laughs> continue to shower your loving words that's mercy. really very very touching and i never knew you could really enrich the experience of singing a bhajan nice story beautiful So now having talked about the power of the name of the Lord which I'm sure is very clear now let's come to the next part which is start early now let me share a very embarrassing experience but something from which we can learn this was almost a decade back <clears throat> it was outside the whitefield ashram and I was just returning in a bus we had got into the bus it so happened the conductor and the driver got down for some work and uh, the gear actually slipped into the neutral gear and since the bus was on a slope it started rolling backwards slowly oh not God. very fast oh my god and there were a couple of people in and let me tell you you know the first thing that happened to me was this you know somehow i must <laughs> rush out of the bus <laughs> believe me there was no sairam no pure intention of saving the other passengers the bus all i did was is rushed between them and got out of the bus but then when i introspected i realized how tough it is to get the name of your lord at these times and that's why i think the next important part is starting early uh, which is basically conditioning of the mind if you see our own ancient indian culture the ritual of upanayanam 
or the Brahma Padesham was performed at the age of seven. Sacred, it was a, uh, the sacred church sermon. sermon. It was a formal entry of the child to education. And what education? Giving him the knowledge of the Brahman, Brahma Padesham. So that's how children learn languages also at that age. It is during this formative age, the age up to seven or so, is when really you can condition the mind. And that's when Namas Manana should begin. In fact, Swami uh, explains this through a beautiful example of the snake god and the stone. Yes. He says that the snake god, if left alone, it grows crooked. So that's what its nature is. Right. So what the gardener does is, he ties a heavy stone towards one end so that as the snake god grows, it grows straight and straight. Mm -hmm. Swami says, similarly, the mind of today's youth has this tendency to, to go wayward, to go crooked. Right. And thanks to modernization and all its evils, that's what we see what happens all the time in the world today. For example, uh, other day I just, I was shocked to hear this news in BBC about uh, a young lad who committed suicide because of cyber bullying. Oh my God. Oh, in fact, that was the first time I was hearing that word, cyber Sorry. bullying. So what happens these days is the bullying continues even after the school hours now in, in the cyber domain. Mm. That's very and, unfortunate. And he was so harassed by that, that he said, I can't take it anymore. Now, why I mention this is, why did this happen? Because the guys who are bullying the kid, they had a false sense of right and wrong. And they are all adventurous spirit and creativity was all misdirected. Basically then Vishu, what you're saying is that so, they should tie the stone of yeah, Namasmarana at a young age. Namasmarana, the love for God, discipline, we have all those stones. Vishu, <laughs> Vishu, I agree, but that's really tough. Now, that's what generally we get to hear from people that it's tough. You know, the snake god must be finding it very tough to have the stone being tied to it. Is it yeah, but right? it makes a huge difference. Yeah, that's why you got to understand what uh, starting problem is. Many of the people... Yeah, that's what have, I mean, the starting problem. Many people have the starting problem. In fact, most of the seekers, in fact, more than 95% of them, give up their effort towards self-improvement at a very early stage of their sadhana. So what do we do? Now, one example, perhaps, which will give a very powerful insight on the starting problem is the rocket launch. A fact which most of us may not know, but the amount of fuel that a rocket consumes to break out of Earth's gravitational pull right at the beginning of its journey is much more than the fuel it consumes in the rest of its journey, which may span thousands and thousands of miles. In rocket science, we call it achieving escape velocity. In our sadhana too, it is only in the beginning that we have to put tremendous conscious efforts to set ourselves free of our old patterns. Most of the beginners give up in the beginning, thinking that the path of spirituality is too taxing and too bothersome, but they don't realize that just like the rocket that enjoys the lightness, the freedom of the space, we too will experience the same provided we are determined and yeah. perseverant in the beginning. So the critical true. point, once you reach the critical point. In, in fact, you look at any sport also, or yeah. for that matter, any fine art, the maximum effort that you need to put is in the beginning. Formative, yes. There's the formative is as you are becoming. Well, effort is always needed, but the maximum effort is the beginning. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. So, for example, I mean, I am a very big sports fan. And uh, I have heard Sachin Tendulkar, uh, the famous cricketer from India and uh, the batsman, uh, who said that he used to practice something like 10 hours a day in between match times, uh, right at the age of something like 12 and 13. Mm -hmm. And he almost reached a point during the World Cup, the recently held World Cup, where he said, I didn't have to do any practice because he felt that he was very good. Just, there's a flow. There's there's a flow. Mm -hmm. So all the effort you really have to put at the beginning and then the effort is is what will really take you through the rest of the journey. In fact, there's a very humorous story Swami talks about starting early. You know, he gives this example in South India. Uh, you have people eating on the banana leaf. Mm. And normally the, the practices, you the, all the food is served. And then you say, you know, Brahmar Panam, you offer it to the Lord. Now, Swami says, instead of doing that, suppose you were to eat all the food and then the leaf is stone and completely, you know, tattered. And then you say, Oh Lord, I offer the leaf and the food to you. <laughs> so naturally you feel it's blasphemous, right? But Bhagwan says, that's what you all are doing. Okay. You wait till the end of your life when your sense organs are weak, when your body is almost about to die. And then you say, God, I want to offer my life to you. Now that's <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> that's because uh, most of us are very comfortable in our comfort zone, wherever we are. And that reminds me of a very interesting conversation between an atheist and a theist. The atheist was continuously discouraging the God believer by criticizing him of wasting 10 minutes of his time every day in prayers. Mm -hmm. To which the theist humbly replies that yes, if God did not exist, he has wasted 10 minutes of his time. But if God really existed, 
then the atheist has wasted his entire life. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, why, that's why Swami and moreover Swami gives a very beautiful example of Lord Yama, the God of death standing with a camera ready to click our photograph rather shoot us any moment. <laughs> he does not say cheese and waits for us to smile and say Sai Ram and then he clicks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> any moment can be last moment. Yes. So every moment has got to be sanctified by his name. Hey Bishu, we heard this clip the other day. Is it not true? In yes, Bhagavad yes. Discourse? Why don't we listen right now? Oh, you yeah. have it with you. Wonderful. Yes, yeah. Let's play it now. We cannot decide how long we are going to journey here, travel in this life. Yepudu, yekado. Where and when? Mudimi andu. Old age? Neka musali andu. Or advanced age? Neka prayam andu. Youth? Neka yoku andu. Or as an angst? Yepudu vidu chedhi yeruko ledu. When we are going to drop this body, we don't know. Marana me nishchayamu. Death is certain. Uddhi muntu daina dev. If you are intelligent enough, know God right now in lifetime. At what moment you are going to receive God's grace? From the worldly point of view. If you want to click your camera and take the photo, you will ask him to stand. The photographer says ready and clicks his camera and gets the picture. This is the procedure followed by photographers in this world. But, but in spiritual path, when God would ask you to be ready, when we are going to picturize Him in our heart, we should be ever ready. We don't need to wait for the age. We don't need to take time. We don't need to follow different actions. Anywhere, anytime, for any reason. We should be ready thinking of God all the time. It is so wonderful to listen yeah, to Swami's nice, voice. Really. Really true. But as uh, Swami tells us about this, I am reminded of a wonderful uh, experience of one of my classmates' father. He is a captain in Merchant Navy. And uh, once when he was in Arabian Sea, they were carrying, uh, you know, huge pipes for oil refineries. Mm -hmm. And the lashings which tie up those pipes suddenly snapped. And oh my God. the weather was also pretty bad then. And the ship began to sink. And you can just imagine, it's, it's a hopeless situation. Everybody were running around in a state of chaos. They were all crying. But he thought, if this is my last moment, you know, let me just give you a little bit of background about him. He spent six months in sea and another six months of free time which he gets, he used to stay most of the time in Prashantinilam, in Swami's presence. So that moment when everybody was crying, he felt that if this is his last moment, he should go to Swami's photo in his room, That's take it. Vibhuti as the last thing that he would do and give up his life. But when he went to his room, lo and behold, you all must be aware that, you know, the chairs and tables in a ship is all bolted uh, to the ship so it doesn't fall as it rocks. But Swami's photo which was on the table was still erect even while oh. the whole boat Spite was, you know, in an table. inclination. And that is when he got inspiration from Swami and he decided to turn the ship against the wave, which is a very a wrong thing to do normally. But then he did that and a huge wave came and hit the ship. And most of these pipes fell into the ocean and some others fell back in place and the ship was stabilized hmm. and all the lives were saved. And even today, it is officially recorded that it is a miracle. Amazing. That's amazing. I think that's how Swami gives you the right, uh, you know, intuition provided again, you know, you have that feeling in your mind. Exactly. Great. So now we'll move on to the third part of our study circle, which is about no shortcuts in spirituality. Right. <laughs> so now again here, let me come back with this uh, humorous story that Bhagwan tells about a, a businessman and then there is a Pandit who is again giving spiritual discourses. And this businessman has gone there to attend, a, you know, a so-called package of a 10-day uh, discourse. And I believe he was told that if he attends this, then he'll have a lot of profits in his business. Wow. Now, you know, that's the way things happen <laughs> these days. Now, it so happened that on one day, that's the seventh day, the businessman was supposed to go to the city for a meeting. So he would not be able to attend the meeting. So he goes and asks the Pandit, uh, what do I do? 
so the pandit tells him okay as per the practice maybe your son can attend the meeting instead of you wow. so that you know <laughs> there are always via media <laughs> solutions so the businessman likes it and he says okay my son will attend but then just before that happened you know the day before that he was about to leave he comes running again to the pandit pandit says what happened did you not go to the city he says no i got a serious doubt what is it he says in case my son attends and suppose after listening to a discourse he develops a detachment towards life what will happen to my business <laughs> you know the swami tells us in a very funny way and then the pandit says oh fool business man you have attended such packages hundreds of times in your life and still you have not been able to give up your attachment do you think by attending once your son can give up so this sort of things don't work in spirituality there is no shortcut you know yeah so what is important is this right understanding we should come yes, at an early age right right and swami you know gives that example of a kid Uh, which has to learn that it should not put its uh, finger in the fire there are two ways it can happen it can put its finger in the fire and learn the hard way and learn the hard way yes or listen to its mother say son don't put your hand in the fire and what is happening now we see every day is what swami is doing as the divine mother he is telling us do not do this chant the name of the lord do not forget god but what happens more often than not that we see in the world today is we want to put our hand in yes. the fire the other day i read an article about an american my name michael gates gill and this person when he was 53 he had everything that is part of the american dream so to say you know a a huge job in advertising expensive home lovely family and all that and when he was 63 he was unemployed divorced nearly broke and <clears throat> even a brain tumor oh my god and after that you know he needed a paycheck now so he took a job in starbucks which was paying him 10 dollar an hour and uh, interestingly after this he says that he loves the job in starbucks and in fact he's written a book it's called how starbucks saved my life and uh, it might be interesting to know that apparently this book on this book a hollywood movie is now based mm-hmm. and this guy has got a huge amount of money at advance so now somebody asked him you know so now you've got so much money you've got it all back so do you want to go back to your posh lifestyle and etc <coughs> he says no Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he says now I've realized what are the true priorities in my life. I know that when I'm serving coffee in Starbucks, I'm not serving coffee. I'm actually serving people. I have learned that there is more happiness in having less. There's more happiness in trying to make a little difference in someone's life. Which is like learning by putting your hand in the fire. That's what. Is it? So exactly? I mean, many people can relate to this. Yeah. Most often, uh, even we do that. We many times we do the mistake and only then learn. And and I think and I think uh, life is too short to make commit all right. All the a mistakes. wise man learns from others' mistakes. So that is what uh, uh, I think is what is more important. The aspect that we have to consciously, right from beginning, I, I get, that's, try that's and understand. Point. Understand that. In fact, uh, yeah, I'm I'm getting <laughs> this is this is what our priorities in life are. <laughs> true, very true. In fact, I'm getting uh, this very beautiful uh, travel through our life, a journey through our life, where you move from. unconsciously incompetent to unconsciously competent and you have four stages in the beginning like a child you know who doesn't know how to walk you are unconsciously incompetent you don't know, you know that, that you do not know. you do not yeah. know <laughs> from there you move on to conscious incompetence you start knowing that okay you do not know maybe yes. like a child who looks at a cycle and does not mm. know that he does mm. doesn't it does not know how to ride a cycle from there you learn how to ride a cycle but you keep falling so that's the stage where you become consciously competent but a time comes when you become so good at uh, you know riding a bicycle that you become unconsciously, unconsciously competent, competent. <laughs> you could do several yeah. things at a time even as you ride a bike even as you ride a bike mm. the so best. the the point is actually to move from this unconscious incompetence to, to unconscious, unconscious competence yes. which is you know a uh, lot of jargon but this is beautiful meaning i think the best <laughs> uh, best form of this unconscious competence is remembering god unconsciously like an autopilot right, right. at the same time performing your day to day action Absolutely. even in bhagavad gita lord krishna says tasmat sarveshu kaleshu ma manusmara yudhyacha which means at all times remember me and fight yeah i was somehow unable to translate this advice of lord to arjuna in my day to day life in my school days when when i was balancing my chemical equation or when i was working on a project with a stiff deadline or even while playing a cricket match with a nail biting finish where was the time to think of god <laughs> at the end of the day i used to feel bad because something or the other used to keep me engaged always 
It was then that I came across the example of a car driver given by Bhagwan. The car driver may be driving his car in the busiest of streets, but we all know that he can talk to the person sitting behind him. He can listen to music or bhajans. He may even attend an urgent call or give a cursory glance to some advertisement on the wall, even as he is driving on a busy street. Yeah. Now, if a person can do so many things while driving his car all the time. keeping his attention on the road right. which means he is mindful of what is going on the road a spiritual seeker too can be mindful of the presence of the involvement of the god in his day to day life at the same time execute his day to day assignments a beautiful example in fact uh, swami gave another example our day to day assignments are something like that of an actor see actor dons uh, different roles but uh, all the time conscious of the fact that he is not that particular role for example i played the role of duryodhana <laughs> okay but thankfully i am not one <laughs> okay <laughs> negative <laughs> character of uh, yeah, mahabharata of mahabharata character even the swami used to tell suryodhana not yeah duryodhana. in fact swami corrected and he made it suryodhana but the whole uh, idea is that we should be aware of our true self constantly while we do various other activities just like an actor yeah uh, ganesh and giridhar you know we are we are saying that uh, we should constantly keep chanting the name we Or should constantly keep, keep the name in the background keep name in the background but you know even that at sometimes might not be easy mm-hmm. for example if i am writing an exam you know i can't have anything else back of my mind yeah. i have to just concentrate on finishing the answers same for someone who is doing a really spe- very specialized job you know e- even uh, by a pilot who is steering yes. a plane right right so for this i think bhagwan has given a solution mm-hmm. bhagwan says it is okay if you start the work with a prayer right and you end the work with a prayer even then you know if you start the work with chanting lord's name and you end it with chanting lord's name then also god is always in in your mind god is always part of that whole process and in yes. fact we started this study circle with a prayer wow, and the best way to now to do is to end it with a prayer right yes yes that's wonderful so we've had a really good discussion and uh, just to again sum up what we have done we have discussed the power of the name of the lord and there is no second thought about it the second aspect was we have to start early it's not something which can just come on our lips at the right. last uh, moment in our life and again no shortcuts in spirituality you cannot outsmart god so, so we have to go through this whole process so i think as bishu correctly pointed out the best way to end this discussion would be with a prayer so let's conclude uh, this discussion with a prayer let's yes, chant yeah. uh, om shanti 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 oh shanti 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 Thank you very much sir for moderating this session and thank you brothers for participating dear listeners this was the third episode of our series radio sai study circle and it was recorded in the studios of radio sai in january 2011